All right, very good. Okay, so uh, in this talk, I just want to make a few key points. First, when we look at tricuspid valve regurgitation, we know it's adverse. When TR is left alone, patients do more poorly than if the TR is treated. Transcatheter tricuspid valve repair is now uh, possible, and I'm going to show you an example of that. And I think Richard has already alluded to this, but really there are a lot of challenges for this procedure. They come down to challenges with imaging, also challenges with indications, and also what exactly are the standard endpoints that we should be using because we have a general sense as to what we're striving for, for aortic and mitral, or for TR as we were discussing earlier. How much do you need to reduce the TR still remains to be uh, determined. And so here's an example of what the impact of TR would be uh, in a patient population. These are data from the TVT registry that came out this year. Uh, this is the mitral clip uh, registry of 3,000 patients, and in that population, 15% had TR, and in those of, who, those of patients who did, their TR obviously was left untreated for the most part, and their survival was much worse uh, than patients without TR. So I think it's imperative for us, uh, for those of us who are catheter-based or surgical-based, that we really do have to have some ways of addressing TR in our patient population. Well, there are many options that are out there. Uh, these are just uh, a few uh, that are listed. I think it's the next frontier. Uh, we all know that there's a huge concentration of mitral since we have pretty much are getting close to finishing with aortic innovation. Uh, tricuspid valve is really uh, uh, where I think it's going and there's so many options. But I'm gonna show you this case and this is the case that Richard showed you a few images of uh, before. This is an 82 year old woman and if you look here, I don't think there's any doubt. Uh, uh, you can name the sign after me if you want, but when the RV is bigger than LV, it's not good. Or you can name it after Dr. Bobolieros if you want, but it's just, it's just not, <laughs> it's not a good sign uh, when, when it's like this. So clearly, uh, a lot of severe uh, TR. Uh, and what was challenging her is, in her is that if you look on the left-hand side, uh, the heart rhythm specialists were very smart, and they said, well, there's a lot of TR here. Let's not put a tricuspid lead across. And I said, fine put it in the coronary sinus, but they still managed to drape uh, the tricuspid valve with the coronary sinus lead. So if you look on the right-hand side, it's floating in and out, hanging on top of the leaflets, and I'm thinking to myself, how in the world am I gonna steer uh, around uh, this, uh, this lead? So what we did is uh, we took a snare, uh, and you can see here, this is just an ordinary uh, snare, and what we do is we essentially take uh, the snare and, and use it to put the lead in the hepatic vein, and, and with that, Richard gets these beautiful images, says, yes, uh, the lead's now out of the way. Uh, and uh, the TR obviously uh, hasn't changed any. It's still quite uh, severe. This is what it looks like. And so what we did is we actually used this snare, and we just left the snare holding the lead in place. Uh, we were afraid that if we uh, let it go, that with all the movements, uh, 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 that, the, that the lead could then prop uh, back for, towards the RV. And then here's a steerable guide catheter with the mitral clip coming up. Uh, and you can see here, uh, the snare is holding that lead uh, well in place. So we then proceed to place two clips and uh, we can talk more about how we did this. There are many ways of doing it. A lot of people like to miskey. Uh, what we did is that we actually keyed it properly and then just use the guide to steer. Uh, no sleeve, uh, guide only. So it's plus minus a rotation on the guide. So you only work on the guy you don't work on Correct, the yeah, with this. And, but you can, you can miskey it too and use a sleeve, uh, but the issues are with height uh, with, with these procedures. And we proceeded to place two clips, as you can see here, uh, that Richard had shown you earlier. Uh, and here's uh, the result. Uh, there's one pair here, and there's another pair here, and uh, the result uh, was quite good. And you can see uh, it actually becomes like, very much like a mitral clip procedure, uh, provided you can see uh, where you need to clip. And these are the images that Richard showed you earlier. Uh, quite satisfying in terms of relief for the MR. Uh, maybe the RV looks a little smaller, I don't know. Uh, but uh, either way, uh, uh, she was a lot better in follow-up. Now, uh, there's a lot of excitement of mitral clip for TR. As we all know, it's currently off-label uh, in the world. Uh, this is a paper published by George Nikoneg. Uh, 64 patients, 88% functional. Uh, 22 of them were combined with mitral clip therapy, and 90% of the time they got at least one grade reduction. Uh, so it's generated a lot of excitement uh, for uh, this space. 
but there are a number of challenges. And so the challenges are, as Richard showed you earlier, you, you simply can't treat what you can't see. Uh, this is a patient uh, who was referred to us. Uh, I really wanted uh, to offer him uh, tricuspid therapy, but I think we all can agree there's no doubt about the severity of the TR, but you can't see the leaflets for worth a darn. Uh, there's, just, there's just way too much shadowing. And Richard tried, I think he stood the patient on his head and tried to get different images and it all looked the same. And so I had to tell him it's either surgery or, or palliation, unfortunately. There's MR, you could have done a Yeah, there is MR. No, there was MR, and I know. <laughs> but it was mostly TR. <laughs> The other challenge, too, is that when it comes to knowing what to do, I think this is going to be one of the biggest challenges going forth uh, for the transcatheter field. Because even for surgery, look at the indications. There's complete guideline absence. Sure, if you're in there for the left side, treat the right side. That's very obvious. But for the right side alone, there are no class 1 indications. And that's the reason for that, and I was on the guideline committee, and the reason why it's because we just don't know what to do. We don't know when, how, how much. And I think that's going to be a big challenge. And as we go forth and talk to agencies like the FDA, who, who's, who's going to be the reciting uh, uh, body to decide that this is appropriate, this is, uh, this is adequate? No one knows for sure. There are a lack of standardized uh, endpoints. We have VARC, we have MVARC, we don't have TVARC. Hopefully soon, but right now we just don't. Uh, and so what are we striving for? We don't really know. And so here's an example. You look at this. Here's a patient, another patient we clipped. This is the left-hand side. This is what we started with. This is what we ended up with. You'd say, oh, there's some reduction here, but you still got a, a significant amount of TR. Absolutely, but look at the RA pressure difference. And this patient, just by dropping from here down to a mean of seven, asymptomatic and follow-up. We got a call from her six months later. She saw her doctor, incredibly grateful. She diaries so quickly, and uh, she's now asymptomatic. And so, again, this is just to bring up the, the fact that the lack of endpoints is, is going to be challenging. I think RA pressure is going to be absolutely essential in determining how, how we do. So, key points, untreated TR is adverse. Transcatheter repair, it's definitely coming. Uh, the Triluminate trial is up and running among others that are uh, like Scout that are also coming. Challenges, imaging indications, and I hope in the next several years we'll finally come to some agreement about what the endpoints uh, should be for these studies. Thank you. Questions for Paul? Paul, just a quick question yeah. about, uh, I mean, there's maybe more logistics, you know, a yeah. few times we've tried to do isolated TR clipping, we usually get a call from the CEO of the hospital the next day. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how do you how do you approach that, or do you just say you know where the hospital's going to need it? And where yeah. Move to another center. <laughs> <laughs> Move to Paul Center. Yeah. We've we've done ten off label. Um, I haven't gotten any complaints. Um, it's one of these ask for permission uh, later or ask for forgiveness rather than permission. But you know our hospital has been generous as a coordinating center. Uh, we have five or six gimmies, and my policy is I don't use up a gimme until somebody calls me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so and, but we also have uh, um, agreements uh, with our executive committee. So we have a leadership council. If there's considerable concern that we're not going to be paid for something, I will uh, uh, write them and say, do I have an okay? You know, can we cover this? And they will, there's a formal letter that comes back that says yes. And so there's, so there's clear communication with their executive committee that, look, this, this is a loss leading uh, procedure we want to do to be innovative. Will you be okay with it? And in a big scheme of thing, you know, you know, in a, in a budget of three or four hundred million dollars, a hundred thousand dollars for something innovative and such, I think is small. But you're right. If if your profit margins are incredibly thin and you've got people bean counting, it's hard. It, it's really, really hard. So. I don't know. What Paul, do you, what do you do at your what, place? What, yeah. yeah, we put our head in the sand is what we yeah. do. But yeah. Paul, uh, tell me, do you? Do these cases get captured by the TVT registry at all? Yes. Yes, they do. Uh, they're, spo they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be. Yeah, so supposed so to be. The, yeah. it, it gets into murky water because, yeah. in fact, the TVT registry, in some ways, is, is, is research, right? We're, right. we're grabbing uh, this information, right. and, and research should be paid for. Um, 
because it, you know, at least from TBT registry, we're getting approval of things like transcatheter mitral valve mm -hmm. and valve and, and other things before. And so, so it's quite murky water, mm -hmm. in, but you have to push forward because uh, you know the patients need it. Uh, not all patients can can travel uh, to your center or to another center yeah. that's doing it. So you have to figure out you know what to do, but you have to. I think the trick here is you have to be profitable enough on your bread and butter structural cases that when you do some of your off-label things, people aren't coming after you. Right. It's meant to be a halo. Yes. And that's what we're striving yeah. for. Right. So, yeah. so everything David showed yeah. today about, you know, kind of making things yeah. streamlined for TAVR, critically important so you can have some breathing room in, in, in other areas. But that being said, my echo partner Richard is on the exec committee, so I, I lean on him heavily <laughs> to get things through. Yeah, but, uh, but <laughs> I do. And the, the TBT registry will have a TR module uh, coming up. I don't know exactly what's going to be rolling out, but I know that the TR module is coming. They have to get it up and running for, I mean, John, do you know? I, I don't I, I, Yeah. Yeah, they've got to get it up and running with Scout and Triluminate trials starting. Uh, so it's any day now. So.